So hey there everybody, as always, welcome to the channel. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few. My name is Rich, and nine times out of 10, we're talking about building our small drone businesses, doing mapping and modeling, construction and progression reporting. It's all a lot of fun stuff. So if you're new to the channel, I hope you like and subscribe and keep coming back to learn a little more about our business and what we do with it. Now today, we're gonna to be talking about remote ID. So love it or hate it, remote ID is still coming. And it's not that far off. So recently, I made the decision to actually really dive into what, what devices are available for drones that aren't Remote ID compliant. Now, I'm just going to reach over here really quick, and we're opening something up. So this, let me see, put it in front of the camera. This is my old Mavic Pro 1. Do you remember these? Do you still have one of these? Well, I've got one. One of the issues with the Mavic Pro 1 is the fact that it um, it's not Remote ID ready. And we also have multiple Mavic 2 Pros, a Phantom 4 Pro, and those aren't Remote ID ready either. So I did some research, watched some additional YouTube videos to see what other people's take on this was. And in the end, I made the decision to pick up the Drone Tag Mini. So this is from a company called Drone Tag, and I actually placed an order with them a few weeks ago, so I used my own money, so this isn't a sponsored video or anything like that. Um, we're actually making the investment in it, because when Remote ID does finally hit us, I'm not closing up the doors on my business, and I need to make sure that I'm in compliance with the FAA rules that, that are there. So out of that Drone Tag Mini box, not many things are in it. So number one, this is the Drone Tag Mini. It's got some uh, dual lock Velcro on the back, 3M dual lock Velcro. It's got three little lights on it, um, and that is about it. So it can actually do network remote identification as well as broadcast remote identification. Now, I'm going to just go ahead and click this on for a minute. So this is all I need, and this is also transferable between drones. Since we've got the little Velcro pack, I could put it on the Mavic 1, I could put it on the Phantom 4 Pro, I could put it on one of my Mavic 2s or both of my Mavic 2s, you know, whatever I'm running. So I've already powered this up, and we've got three green lights on, which means that it's good to go. So it's good GPS, it's good for Bluetooth, for the Bluetooth uh, broadcast, and its status is in the green as well right now. So I can affix this to the drone, I can give it a quick click, and there we go. Once I give it the quick click, it is now broadcasting. So you see those little white lights there. So there we go, flash, flash. And um, that is letting me know that it's actually doing the job right at this very moment. So I'm going to set this down and I'm going to let it keep doing that. Now, what else came in my box? Well, a little uh, USB dongle cable for charging it. And what was missing, we were missing some of the dual lock Velcro. So they actually sent me some extra and one additional cable for resetting the firmware on this. Now, the other thing that came in the box is this strange little instruction sheet here. That's actually not strange, just really small text. I am getting older, the small text is a little difficult. So we've turned the uh, Drone Tag Mini on, and if we go through their instructions, you can set up on their uh, website for, uh, for registering your Drone Tag Mini, or you can use a mobile device um, with Drone Tags app, which is what I chose to do. So I'm just looking at this really quick and I'm looking at register your device. So it says connect your device via the micro USB to a power source and turn it on with the power button. Register your device in the app and add your drone. And really simple, really easy for hooking this up um, to the mobile app. It only took me a couple of moments. I'm not even going to walk you through the setup. It's so simple. Basically, though, Android or iPhone, you're going to want your Bluetooth turned on. And with the Bluetooth turned on, um, you can connect right up to it in their, um, in their uh, second step. So under the mobile app, it says, turn on Bluetooth. In the profile section, so we're going to show you the uh, iPhone version in just a moment. In the profile section, select devices and, cl and uh, click register new. Seriously, is that simple? So I'm changing screens really quick for a moment, okay? And what we're going to do now, let's uh, pull this up here. And I'm grabbing the iPhone, and I'm going to turn my iPhone on, and we're gonna do a little screen mirroring here. So let's go ahead 
and we're going to there it is richest mac studio all right there we go so now we're into my iphone and you can see uh you know i've got uno nobody will play uno with me where's all the card players out there but right down here we have drone tag so i'm going to tap on the drone tag and if you recall i turned this on and then i actually had it flashing white so we can't see that right now because we're on the uh, drone screen here or on the uh, iphone screen here but we can see the drone tag mini is showing that it's on we've got some network connectivity we've got bluetooth connectivity and apparently inside we've got seven uh, satellites hooked up here so this is perfect so right now we could go go to currently ongoing flight and see where the drone is and if there was anybody else running a remote ID broadcast version, um, I'd see them and pick them up on screen as well. And there's nobody else around here um, at the moment. So that's fantastic. But so we could go to the current flight or I'm going to go up to the upper right. So under the profile, you can see we've got Rich C, digital RV at Mac.com. And this is where we uh, sync up the drone tag mini with our iphone or our android whichever you're using so under the profile it did pick up my serial number right away and we can also go look at my devices so there is my device right now and it's considered in flight because it's not actually in flight it's on a table so that is all okay but very very simple very easy to utilize and here we go we could go to the current flight so what information is it putting out the telemetry right now it's giving the gps location my height so um negative 1.6 feet heading and speed altitude right now the status of it so flight category is open and we have the network and direct under the data source right here so there we go all right let's pop out of this and then we're going to talk a little bit more about the mini and also the beacon so i'm going to close this down here and we will stop our mirroring stop that so in my research on mobile id ready devices to you know add on to our drones i'd seen a lot of videos on youtube uh, folks testing out the drone tag mini talking a little bit about it and i made the decision to go ahead and purchase one myself now they do offer another product in addition to the drone tag mini is the drone tag beacon which is even smaller and lighter than the mini the big difference between them, and I'm just going to scroll down here, is remote identification. So we're still looking at Drone Tag's mini website, remote ID, network remote ID. This is where our information is actually uploaded to the cloud. And this is actually a service the folks at Drone Tag offer that you can upload to their cloud. Now, this is not required. What is required, so this is a step above what's required right now, is direct broadcast remote ID. So drone tags other device the beacon is a direct broadcast remote id only it's broadcasting in bluetooth about three kilometers and it really does go that far um in our experimentation last week my other half had to go up to the local garage because air conditioning in her vehicle wasn't working well while she was up there she knew i was playing around with the drone tag mini she went ahead and turned on the drone tag app on her phone not registered to this or anything but she immediately saw where i was now while we're all concerned about people being able to hunt us down and pester us while we're doing our flights with our drones you know usually on a construction job site or other job site um it's not as concerning to me as it was initially with the initial push on remote id with the direct broadcast you got to be really close by in the first place before you're going to pick us up because we're broadcasting bluetooth it's not going miles and miles away it's really actually close by it's also not broadcasting my information as a pilot in command it's not giving my address or anything um but it is showing the approximate area where the controller is for the drone so direct broadcast remote id is what we need here in the us so in that case if you don't want the network side as well you can just get the drone tag beacon as i said the beacon's about <laughs> it's almost half the weight of this uh drone tag mini and this thing is already tiny so it's fantastic that it's a really small profile lightweight hopefully it's not going to interfere with my flight much but so if you decide to pick up the drone tag beacon you're going to be using the same app and it's going to connect up just the same as i did with the mini so it's a very simple solution 
It's also eased my mind about what remote ID is going to be this year. And it's made it easy for me to feel comfortable in complying with it. Now, if additional data was sent out about us, that'd be a different story. But what we're looking at right now with the Mini and with the Beacon is a simple setup, a very quick setup, and then you know that you're in compliance with the FAA. All right, everybody, I hope this was a useful and informative video for you. And be sure to like and subscribe and pop back to the channel regularly. Uh, we've got a lot of new projects going on. We do share our projects with our subscribers here to give you an idea of what we do for our regular day-to-day -day drone business.